Right, welcome everyone to uh, our second podcast. Um, we've got Tim Brown with us today, uh, the specification manager from Zipclip, and we're we're going to be talking about the uh, how the, the involvement of threaded rod and traditional methods, you know, have evolved into wire systems and the, the benefits of it. So, welcome, Tim. Thanks, Jake. Good uh, to be here. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, you've been you've been a as, as discussed previously, we've been in the industry uh, a while, I think since 78, I believe, so a bit of experience there. Yeah, so, so I started on the tools when I was five, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> good to go. That, I was going to say, 78, you must have been five years old then. Absolutely. Uh, but obviously, it's pre predominantly building services, electrical yeah. background, so obviously, um, yeah, you've got a bit of experience there. Yeah. So yeah, I, as you know, we're, we're doing these podcasts and we're talking about uh, products in the industry that are, if you like, leading the way and changing the way uh, we do things in construction and particularly building services. So, yeah, I've got a few questions for you, if that's all right with yourself. I Far hope away. I don't catch you out. Far away, Jake. Okay. So, um, obviously, we know there's a few challenges that you come up against with wire hanging systems. I think it's obviously people's misconception of the yeah. system. Um, but from your point of view, obviously being the expert, could you, what's, why should we change from Rod? What's the, you know, if I've used rod for years and years and it works, I can rely on it. Yeah. You know, why why should I change? Well, I think the challenge is that people that have used products for ages, they get set in their ways. Um, you know, if you go back to angle iron, when they went from angle iron to channel, you know, there would be a, a reluctance to change because experience tells us that change introduces a risk mm -hmm. and risk introduces a cost. Yeah. So, so it's our job as uh, manufacturers when we're out there talking about new innovations or trying to get people to look at alternatives to that that they've already used for years, we've got to provide them with the confidence and the accountability that the product we're offering is going to be a benefit to them. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it really doesn't matter what aspect of services you're in, you're always going to stay with, with what you know. What you know, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, you know, it's really, really important that we take the time to understand that people are not just going to change to wire from rod overnight mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we've got to prove to them that there is no risk to them doing that mm -hmm. and we've got full accountability you know a any manufacturer should be able to offer product that is fully compliant to the standards mm -hmm. and be able to show the the testing and the accountability mm -hmm. that means that guys can use it girls can use it and you know they're going to sleep well at night as mm -hmm. a result mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. and like you said it's, it's definitely just change isn't it yeah it, that, that's all it is i mean because I, I even myself working in this industry you can even say listen we can prove it works but there's that absolutely st doesn't st still doesn't no doesn't no. crack it sometimes does it i, I think it's the, the fact that you know if you've been using threaded rod you you're looking at um a, a bar of steel aren't you a rod of steel and, you, and you've got this uh, I inferred acceptance that that product's going to do a job mm -hmm. and then you come along with uh, a wire rope and people look at that and go how can that be as strong as yeah. threaded rod? Well, you know, uh, two mil wire is the same as 10 mil rod in terms of performance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, we're, you know, we're, we're having the same argument years ago when people were looking at using um, cable basket instead of cable tray, you know. Bit of visual engineering. Absolutely. You yeah. look at someone that's got 15% material as basket against cable tray, and you go, well, it can't be as strong. So you have to go out and do the testing to prove it. And, mm -hmm. and that's the manufacturer's responsibility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know, reputable manufacturers are never gonna balk mm -hmm. about talking to customers and providing the information to make sure that there is no risk, that, that the job's gonna get done. And you, you know, you've got the full design capability behind it yeah, yeah. To, to make sure that everyone from the professional team, mm -hmm. through to the installer, right the way through to to the sign off at the end mm -hmm. and, and completion of the mm -hmm. you know o and m manuals the right documentation's there yeah uh, and the if you're going to change from rod to wire the first job yeah it's it's probably going to be a, a, a different mindset for you, you you're going to be using something but you know certainly from our point of view you know you're working with them all the way through you don't you don't just leave them you know, it's like when you when you in sales and you go to a new job and they fill your boot with catalogs and say there you go get on with it yeah yeah you know you yeah. can't do that when you you've got a product and you're actively trying to say to someone the benefits of this are yeah you, you need know, to hold their hand i suppose through the first process don't you absolutely the, actually yeah. absolutely because the, the thing is you know it's, it's the old adage 
if you're going to try something new, the question is, what's in it for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From your point of view, contractor, installer, what's in it for you? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we've got to get across the benefits of, of wire, what it adds to them, you know, and at the moment, yeah. so many different demands with the whole COVID situation, mm. you know, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. it brings in a whole raft of other concerns to people. Yeah. But you, there is no challenge in changing from rod to wire, mm. you know. Okay. So that's good. Yeah, absolutely no problem at all. Okay. All right. <clears throat> right, moving on to the, to the next question then. Obviously, we quite often, uh, being a seller of wire systems or a, a stockist, we're often asked the question, or like you said, visually, it's definitely not as rigid as Rod. Mm. We know that. Yeah. Um, so, so again, what's what's your what's your argument with that? Um, you know, the rigidity. <clears throat> I'm guessing that isn't really the benefit, is it, of, of Rod? You're not using it because it's rigid. I'm guessing you're having it because of its tensile strength. Ab absolutely. I, I mean, it, it's tensile strength is crucial, but so much of systems is about flexibility and, and sometimes rigidity is uh, a double-edged sword you, you mm. want the strength but rigidity in um you know movement if you're putting basket in for argument's sake and you're putting them on brackets at 1200 mil centers and you've got threaded rod brackets mm -hmm. and that basket goes on uh, a piece of channel and the beam wire of the basket sat right in the middle of the channel you know you, you've then got a apply either pressure to the basket or pressure to the bracket to make yeah. it fit mm -hmm. with, with wire you you don't have to do that with wire you can just move it enough to accommodate the whole down clamp or yeah the, yeah the, the clip or whatever you're going to use mm -hmm. so you know if you're doing that time after time with brackets you you're introducing stress into a system so flexibility is a strength um, yeah if you get expansion and contraction in a system mm -hmm. wire is going to take that up without any problem at all. Mm -hmm. And once you get, you know, particularly containment, when we're talking about containment and duct work, we're talking about big chunks of, of kit, yep. that once they get onto the brackets and you start to couple them together, they introduce the rigidity to yep. the system anyway, mm -hmm. you know. But um, I, I've been to projects where the, the, the time frame for the installation is really, really tight, mm -hmm. um, often in retail. Uh, what you can do when you've installed brackets on wire is to push the bracket out of the way if there's something coming in that yeah, needs, yeah. needs mm -hmm. to be, you know, put in place around yeah. it. Uh, and guys, once they get used to this, they see the benefits of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You know, as I said, mm -hmm. expansion and contraction. Yeah, there is mo yeah. enough movement in the wire, but mm -hmm. there's also movement in a threaded rod system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you know, you, you've got to consider what is it you're trying to do mm -hmm. and what are you looking to achieve? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I've seen installs before where I've walked around a supermarket and they've used uh, rod, <clears throat> and you can if you look down at your seats, it's not hanging dead straight either. It's slightly, oh, slightly off. And I suppose with wire, you're always going to get kind of a, a nice straight drop, aren't you? Well, if good, it takes into account any, uh, yeah. The good thing with wire is you've got full <coughs> accountability. So when you when you're looking at the the, the range of, of wire thicknesses, I mean you've got safe working loads from 15 kilograms to 500 kilograms per wire. So, you know, from, from 30 kgs to 1,000 kgs per bracket. And, and obviously, when you see rod coming down, uh, trying to find its way through a congested service corridor, sometimes it's bent, sometimes it's at an angle. So how do you know what the load bearing capacity of that rod is now? Yeah, yeah. If, if you're doing that with, with wire, we can give you a ratio for the angle. So as soon as you introduce an angle, it introduces the uh, reduces the performance of the well, wire, but yeah, we yeah. can tell you what it is. But so you can't. Still, we, you, so you can't do that with Rod, really, can you? No, it's still wholly accountable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think this is one of the challenges. I mean, I went to a, a, a big retailer recently, and they've got some fan core units on Rod, and every one of them looked like it had been bent round a contractor's knee. <laughs> yeah, and you, and, you, and you look yeah. at it and you go, what part of you know design calc is that? Yeah, um, it just doesn't even look right. Yeah, absolutely. Does it? Well, well yeah. with the wire, the wire would have come in at the angle continuously, mm -hmm. and you could have calculated the load from yeah. what angle it is. Mm -hmm. So again, mm -hmm. it, it's full accountability, but people yeah. overlook it. Mm -hmm. They have this 
you know, this in-depth acceptance of what a product does mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, without really thinking about the ramifications of bending a bit of rod ground you need to make it fit mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. or, or forcing it through services or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. can you imagine forcing a bit of rod up against a bit of ductwork and introducing some sort of harmonic or whatever or a, or a buzz, yeah. you know, and everyone's going, where's that coming from? Yeah. You know, with yeah, yeah. wire, you can feed it through the gaps. It, of course. It, it's got so many benefits mm -hmm. in, in that respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, aesthetically, yeah, yeah. It's, it's much more appealing than a, than a Forrester oh, threaded rod. Oh, there's, you nothing know. Worse than, <coughs> there's nothing worse than that. Absolutely. Uh, okay. <clears throat> right then. So, quite an important question for you next. Um, so, d does, the, does the wire system, or particularly zip clip, does that comply with uh, the BS? Sorry, forgive me, Tim. I should know this off the top of my head. Seven six seven one, or the eighteenth edition. Um, you're, you're, not, you're not alone in not knowing that off the top <laughs> of your head, Jake. I just, not many people do, do they? It's, uh, well, it's, 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 it's obviously the wiring regs. Um, yeah, yeah. And the eighteenth edition, obviously, there's been the change to say that all uh, routes are access routes, not just corridors. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions that we often get asked is about eighteenth edition, and the eighteenth edition requires a full metallic suspension solution. So yeah, absolutely, we're compliant to that. You know, mm -hmm. there, there's no plastic in, in any of our, our products. It is a full metallic solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously with uh, things like the catenary, you know, uh, you, you've got a lot of flexibility, a lot of options to use wire compliantly. Mm -hmm. um, so in that respect, yeah, totally, no problems at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look to the question of fire rating, well, that was my next question. <coughs> well, we get asked this in, in the same breath. Yes. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So I, I think it's important to really put to, to bed. These are two separate issues in that respect. You know, nothing in terms of cable management, rod, channel, brackets has got a standard for fire rating. No. You know, you know there is no industry standard, and, and that's not right. No. There, there's no two ways about it, but then there never has been one. So again, everything that people do is based on historical experience. Mm -hmm. and, and that probably, again, it introduces that reluctance to change from, from what they know. But yeah, you know, if you want to look at, at fire rate, and you've, you've then got to go for, well, what's the most relevant test? Yeah. Um, well, and is there, a, is there a test? Well, there isn't. The, you, you know, not. I suppose not was, is that there's that temperature curve or the performance curve that people well, refer to. Yeah, temperature curve for BS four seven six, which is the curve that everyone uses for fire testing. Um, but again, that's one situation. That's one fire curve that is looking to cover a whole wide range of yeah. fire situations. Yeah, um, four seven six part 20 to 24 is what people will mostly test to. Well, that's going to be superseded by EN 1363 to EN 1366 in the fullness of time. So when, when we're testing and we're looking at 476, we're really looking at construction materials. Yeah. So we're looking at products that will support buildings, uh, that are load bearing, that are non-load bearing, but still products that will offer some fire resistance from zone to zone, yep. from corridor to room, from corridor into ceiling space and all that. Mm -hmm. so, so when you look at cable management and you look at brackets and services installs, with the exception of you know, um, part 24, which is for duct work, um, there's, there's not really a suitable test. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, what's this, what can we do then? What, what, are, what well, are you going to do about it, Tim? Well, very, very <laughs> kind of you to put me on the spot there, Jake. Well, there needs, there needs to be a test, That's, there, like there, you there said. Absolute, there absolutely does. You, you're not wrong. <coughs> I mean, obviously, with in terms of uh, premature collapse, um, BEMA organisations like that are working to produce guidelines of what's acceptable and testing methods and that. Yeah. But, you know, when, when we're looking at premature collapse, we're not just looking about things falling down. Um, and obviously, with premature collapse, we've had instances where firefighters have got tangled up in wires on the breathing apparatus and, and tragically right, okay. lost their lives. But premature collapse can be things like uh, dado trunking coming off the wall and becoming an obstruction. Mm -hmm. There's any number of things that can collapse prematurely and block an access route. Mm 
yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. And, and there's a whole range of issues when you look at fire rating. I mean, you, sh you, sh you know, you should really look at fire rating in terms of evacuation times as well. Because yes. how long does it take to evacuate a building? If you take schools, for, for instance, you know, um, if you said to the headmistress of a primary school, how quickly can this school be emptied? You, you know, you'd want her to be saying seconds, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. But there's probably a reality of five minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the fire curves, you, you, you need to relate that evacuation time to at what point on the fire curve is that? Because yeah. again, different products in different situations are, are going to react differently. Of course. So if there was a depending fire, on the load as well, I'm guessing. Absolutely. And carrying. depending on the type of fire it is, uh, uh, I mean, you know, a hot one. Well, yeah, but recently <laughs> and horrendously, you know, if you take the, the, the tragedy in Lebanon, you know, yeah, yeah. hundreds of mm. people, thousands of people were, were, were filming a fire on their phones, whatever device they, they, they've got, but they were videoing a fire. What they weren't aware of was the propellant that was in the docks yeah, yeah, yeah. that was just waiting to create that, yeah. that terrible explosion. Yeah. Now, there's you know, no way of testing for that, is there? You, you, that's, you, that's, can't, you can't account for that. And, and I think yeah. this is one of the challenges, you know, 476 is a guideline, but as a, as a manufacturer, we can test, and most manufacturers do project specifically. And so we do our independent testing and we will give you a document to say, you know, for that load, for that period of time, mm -hmm. there's, there's the accountability. Can we really certificate it if there's not a standard yeah. to apply it to? Yeah. So you could only do basic individual testing on the application for it to be absolutely accurate, yeah, well, or, or until we develop a standard for testing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I've said that there's there's no standard uh, for cable management, and people are probably going, yes, there is. There's the wire basket for one hundred and two, but that's not a basket test. Mm -hmm. That's a cable test. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and this is the challenge. You know, people is that the, go, is that where We've seen previously with the, the, the fire, putting the cable in the basket and it's... Absolutely. Yeah, I've seen it. You I've know, seen that test. Yeah. And a lot yeah. of people have, but that test is for cable. It's not a test for wire basket. But, okay. but the inference is at the end of that, when the cable <coughs> manufacturers show you the, the results of two hours in a furnace, then the, the containment's still there. I must be okay. So we'll give it a fire rating, but it's not a basket test. Yeah. It's, it is a cable test, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and I think this is this is one of the challenges that people face. And and it's mm. like people say it's a, you know, it's a thousand degrees for two hours. Well, if you look at the 476 fire curve, it doesn't get to a thousand degrees until 80 minutes. So if you do a two hour fire test, it's actually a thousand degrees for 40 minutes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If, if you want to do two hour testing, yeah. you've got to do it for 300 minutes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's again, it's inter interpreting the information. It's the definitions. So much is left to the individual. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the industry, not just the manufacturer, the industry needs to put something in place that completely takes that. Uh, because we need to, we're just going to have, it's, otherwise it's going to keep happening over and over again. Is it the same questions and no one absolutely. has a definitive answer? Absolutely. And, you know, if, if we give, as manufacturers, if we give a contractor a piece of paper and say, there's our test, that's, in, that's what we did independently, there's the performance, so on this project, mm -hmm. we, we're, we can say that's how it's going to perform, they're, they're probably happy in terms yeah. of that. You know, when we talk about certification, what is it you actually want? Because yeah. there's a lot of things in our industry, you know, white papers and various pieces of information that are out there that may be not wholly accurate, but the contractor says, well, I don't mind that because I've got it from them. So yeah, that, yeah. that's me covered, yeah. you know, and we, we live in a litigious society. So particularly with things like fire, um, it's important to address it correctly mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. you know, people's lives are at risk. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's, it's also important to state that, you know, a lot of the, the recent push on fire testing and that is because obviously of the Grenfell disaster. Oh yeah, massively. You, you know, yeah. and and obviously in in that with the, uh, the the Hackett report, there was also the, the the phrase about value engineering, and and that's not something we should use. And again, people have interpreted that term to mean and and uh, you know uh, 
come across as something that it isn't. Value engineering is not just buying the cheapest Cheap, product. No, no, no. Yeah. You know, that's not what value engineering is yeah. about. It's getting the most for your money. Basically. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, value <coughs> engineering is about applying the standards to get the most from the innovative products you're looking to use yeah. that comply with the standards and perform as they're expected to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that comes down basically to integrity. So yeah, everyone yeah. in the professional team, from the designer to the installer, to the commissioning engineer has got to have the integrity and sometimes the courage to say that product don't perform. Mm -hmm. It's been put there, but we've got a problem with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you mm -hmm. know. But I we'll suppose it's the other issue as well is if there's, like you said, if there's a manufacturer <coughs> that's going to the end user and saying, listen, I know that there's not an official test, but we're going to say it works. Like you said, end users are happy with that sometimes, even knowing that they know that that bit of paper means nothing. Yeah. As far as they're concerned, it's like, well, they've took on that risk. That's I can put my finger at them, which is, it, it's not ideal, is it? Because it, it, it doesn't... It's not, no. It, it, you know, there are, <coughs> there are a number of contentious issues in our industry, and certainly in cable management and that in the past, and suspensions. That, that There's a load of information out there that, that, as I said, is maybe not wholly correct, but people, manufacturers, are viewed as the experts. Uh, you can't expect a contractor with the range of products and services and requirements that are now in a project you know you can't expect them to have the knowledge about everything no. you know um, they've got to rely on the manufacturer's <laughs> expertise to give them the correct information definitely yeah so yeah. it's really crucial that we drive this forward and certainly as far as we're concerned it's something that we're putting a, a huge amount of effort in to, to try and change and make sure that the information is out there. Mm -hmm. It's not only correct, but it, but it's relevant. It's relevant. Because and it no can apply to any uh, absolutely. manufacturers. There needs to be so a standard that we can all use. Isn't there? Absolutely. There's no point having uh, a fire rated product that actually, at the end of 120 minutes, has got the load bearing capacity yeah, yeah. Of, of, a, of a leaf. Yeah, yeah, know, sure. It's no good at doing testing. You end up with a chocolate fire guard, is it? So no, no. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Thanks for that, Tim. Um, obviously, you've, you've discussed and you've been over some of the advantages of wire hanging systems. Um, but if we can go into a bit more detail on the benefits, um, if you imagine we was explain, explaining this to someone that predominantly uses threaded rod, you know, what, what's the main advantages they, they're going to get you know, for using um, a system such as ZipClip? First thing is ease of installation. You know, um, the, the product comes in boxes, uh, wire, wire comes in boxes on a reel, and you get the clips separately. So if you look at the whole ease of transportation, um, reduction in storage, environmental benefits, mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, you can reduce your prime cost because it's going to take you less time to install uh, a, a wire system. Mm -hmm. There's I could probably have a few kilometres of it in my boots if I wanted. You, you could. I mean, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. One of the uh, examples that I give it when I'm doing my CPD uh, to, to engineers or consultants is that if you wanted to put in a um, 100 one metre trapeze brackets, um, you know, you'd, you'd have obviously 200 metres of rod and you'd have your, your 100 sections of channel, etc. cetera. Um, we could do that with a rucksack we could get a yeah. product in a rucksack you know someone could pick it up on their bike from the distributor on the way to site you know you wouldn't be able ticking to the green box there oh well absolutely but you know <laughs> I, I to say I did this at one um, one of the major consultancies in London and just saying that you know you could pick this up in a rucksack on a push bike on the way to work looking around the room you could see just the expression change and a lot of people going well yeah it be difficult to do that on a bike with 200 meters of yeah. rod, 66 lengths of rod strapped to your crossbar. I mean, that's just, that's a really good analogy. You know, the fact that you could, on your way to work, get something so heavy that traditionally would be heavy, you can put it in your backpack on your bike on the way to work. I mean, that kind of, that proves in itself, you know, the, the weight advantage of it straight away. There's just a lot more components with the traditional system than there mm. is with wire. I mean, typically you're looking at 33% saving in components. Uh, you could be looking at at least a 50% saving on the install time, mm -hmm. you know, and material cost, probably there or thereabouts, yeah, yeah. you know, but your actual prime cost is reduced. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that, that, that I've certainly been banging on about for years is when we're, when we're putting up brackets, 
why in the UK does everyone say we've got to put brackets up at 1200 mil centres? You know, it's it's a really bizarre thing because mm -hmm. it goes back to pre decimalization pre-metric. You know, when Trayum, that was made in eight foot lengths, so they allowed a bracket every four foot, and we've never changed. So there's an indication of our reluctance to do things differently. So, so I thought the the bracket centres with containment of 1.2 metres was down to the, the maximum load that the containment could take. Is that right? Yeah? You're absolutely right. So there should be the opportunity, if you know the load and you know what you're carrying, to push the number of brackets to 1,500, yeah. 2 metres, or beyond if the load bearing capacity is, is acceptable. Yeah, of course. Well, you know, if you go from 1200 mil to 1500 mil, you've just saved 16 brackets in every 100 meters. Yeah, yeah. So it soon adds up, doesn't it? It's important from us as manufacturers to say, what we don't want to do is sell you any more material than you actually need. Yeah. You know, so when, you, when you're looking at wire, you need to understand what it is you're hanging up mm -hmm. and could you be hanging up less of it mm -hmm. Um, because Value engineering, like you said, this is it, isn't it? Jake, I'm so glad you're listening. Um, <laughs> yeah, totally. It, yeah. It, it's absolutely crucial because there's no point in hanging up 10 kilos per meter if you don't need to. So, you know, when we're talking to contractors, we want to get across to them that we understand that you could be hanging up less, that you yeah. could be putting in fewer suspensions, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and that to me is the right way to go about it, not just to cut and paste what people have always done with wire, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. to say, right, what, what are you carrying? What's the load? What are we working to? And to offer them the solution. And you know, that, that again is what we do from people sending us drawings and us doing the designs, basically the take off the materials list. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it, it's a turnkey solution yeah. to your suspension, mm -hmm. you know? Um, uh, and I think the fact that obviously you, you get a finished material, um, you don't need hot works, you cut it with um, cutters, you, you know, there's, yeah. there's so many benefits and obviously. Yeah, I always find that, you know, these cost savings, that they're quite hard to, to itemize. So for example, if you're, if you're quoting for a, for a wire system, you want to, you need to itemize, you know, the speed of delivery and it, modifications costs, you know, but it's, you can't really put a value to that, can you? No, no. You know, well, for example, if, if you did need to modify it, and I suppose it's one of these things you can't account for, um, and it's a cost to modify something, if you did want to modify it, you know, you would have, would have been glad that you've used something like a wire system. Um, because it is a cost, isn't it? It, it is a cost. You know, um, when, you, when you look at reducing your prime cost in first fix, there's, there's several layers to it. Um, mm. And people don't apply it. I mean, if you if going back to sort of cable management more than wire at the minute, but... If you understand what 61537, the train ladder standard talks about, and you apply that as opposed to just banging in brackets at 1200 mil centers and putting in a 100 mil trail basket for this and a 100 mil trail basket for that. Yeah. If you start going multi-compartment, the, the savings are huge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And certainly if you look at the whole system as a, a complete solution, mm -hmm. you know, if we sat down with a contractor and we talked about 61537 because we can we can reduce the wire size potentially. You know, we might be looking at um, a, a, a larger wire when a smaller wire would do, and that's cost, and that's just common sense. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at the cross-section area of our product, it, it's smaller than rod. So you've got yeah. a whole load of benefits, just aesthetic, less surface area from contamination. You know, uh, if you look at the environmental yeah. impacts, one container of two mil rod, uh, uh, sorry, two mil wire, you get 1,440,000 meters in one container, okay? Wow. If you're gonna bring 10 mil rod over, the same amount, you'd need 32 containers. Wow, yeah. Now, that's a no-brainer, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Surely. It's a lot of CO2 there. <clears throat> it's a huge <laughs> amount of CO2. I mean, it's, it's true though, isn't it? I mean, it is, it's something which, you know, we should really consider. Um, I mean, for example, if, if more and more contractors were using um, a wire system, I mean, it has to have a, 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 a good impact on the environment, a big tick in the green box there. Um, I mean, yeah, we, we, we can't ignore it. You know, it has, to be, it has to be a benefit, doesn't it? You know, the guy who writes the requisitions on site, Every time he writes a requisition for more components, what's the cost to his business? So, you know, if he, if he needs to adjust or make more stuff, every order's probably 
I don't know, 100, 150 quid cost to that business. Mm -hmm. and, it, and if that's just for um, a few more nuts and bolts to finish some brackets, it's, yeah. it's probably a net loss to the industry and that business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, as you said, the adjustability with wire is so total. So single double trapeze brackets with, with mm -hmm. product where you can just so easily adjust. Um, you can suspend off of purlins, you know, just loop round. You can make brackets solutions so simple yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> that it, it yeah, you're right. It I doesn't need to be complicated bracketry, does it, no. anymore? There's, there's, there's easier you, ways of doing yeah. things now. <laughs> you, you've just got to take a step back because some people just can't see the wood for the trees. Yeah, yeah. And they're always going to do what they've always done and they're always going to get what they always got. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. you want to be competitive, you've got to do something different that provides you with a competitive edge rather than just make an error in mm -hmm. your estimate. Yeah, and yeah. then, you know, you win a job on the back foot trying to recover it. Yeah, yeah. My argument has always been, if you look at, prime cost on containment and, and your support solutions and you're selling that in that detail to a client or a consultant or whatever, they're probably thinking no one else has gone into this level of detail for the first fix. Yep. I wonder what he's done on building management systems and mm -hmm. all the other, you know, more uh, high tech, perhaps m more costly packages. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it shows that you're, you're extracting every last penny. You know, mm -hmm. I, I've attended so many functions where um, people are talking about big investments and they're looking at innovations and we're all about innovation. Um, because, you know, first fix is a long way down the food chain. By the time you talk to them and say, well, we're all about first fix containment and, and supports and wire solutions and this sort of thing, oh, I'm not interested. You've been banging on for two hours about innovation. Surely you want to extract every possible cost. Of course, yeah. And not just <coughs> dismiss tens of thousands of pounds which again mm -hmm. across the industry over the course of a year is millions of pounds yeah yeah you know yeah, so yeah i suppose uh, that's i suppose leading on to a uh, the next point i was going to mention about that <clears throat> yeah i mean that's what we we're finding to be honest I mean, when we're speaking with with end users um we find that you know bracketry always seems to be you know a bit of a headache and it's on every job it's a bit of a problem but i suppose that's the benefit of working with zip clip we can kind of um, you know, take that problem off their table um, and we'll give them a, you know, work yourselves and you provide it as one complete solution. We, we, we do certificated pool tests. Um, you know, we, we do the on-site uh, training with the guys, make sure they're, they're using the product correctly. Yeah. And it is in, that's, and that's a key point, isn't it? Um, you know, installation. Um, I think some of the misconceptions about wire systems are actually linked to <clears throat> the bad installation of a product it's not the system itself you'll find that if things have come down you'll probably find that it's actually the installation um speaking to one of my colleague who's, colleagues who's a uh, fixing specialist even he was saying you'll be surprised at you know how often a, an anchor fixing is actually installed correctly it's uh, yeah it's quite frightening but it's uh, we, i suppose it proves a point that you know we do need to make sure at least that, that you know the installer is competent at, you know installing these correctly Ultimately, however that service is, <coughs> excuse me, however the service is connected to the substrate, it's that connection to the substrate that's the crucial thing. So we can have the best module, the best bracket, but, but if the fixings into the concrete or the timber or around the purlin are, are not done correctly, then we're introducing a massive risk. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we shouldn't assume, we, we shouldn't assume that people are familiar with our products as I say, as manufacturers, we should go out and see them and make sure that they're comfortable with a product that by the time we've had 10 minutes on site, they know what they're doing yep. and that we're on the end of a phone. That's it. Yeah. 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 So full, full accountability. And I, and I think certainly that's something that we at ZipClip are, are, are massive on. And, um, you know, I've worked with some good organisations in terms of accountability, but certainly my current one is right at the top yeah, yeah. in terms of technical knowledge and support. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'll come back for that. Let's uh, be working close to you guys. It's really good. Okay, Tim. Yeah, so uh, moving on. Uh, we're actually on our last and final question now. Um, so from your point of view, what is, what's the future for, for, for wire systems as a whole? You know, um, is it going to develop further? You mentioned that you're working on developing a, uh, a standard test, particularly for fire rating, which, you know, uh, all manufacturers can adhere to. Um, but other than that, you know, what, what, where can you see the future for, for wire systems? I think more people are going to be looking to be more competitive. So ultimately, you know, and, and in my experience, I saw this with 
tray to basket conversion. When people saw the benefits of basket over tray, um, it was it was huge, and they they very often didn't go back to tray. And I think when people start to use wire and they get more and more comfortable with it and confident with it, and you know when you look at the the people that we work with, the clients that certainly Zipclip work with, they wouldn't be using. Uh, wire products if they weren't absolutely confident it was the yeah. right solution you know yeah. we work with a whole range of blue chip companies and moving forward I think that programs are going to get quicker no two ways about that the environmental ticket is, is one that's going to have to be punched yeah. more and more regularly mm. so the easiest way it's to not talked that, about enough I don't think that side of it and well, I think the way the world is at the minute it, it should, that's it should right. be serious that's you know? right I mean it's one of those things that people are aware of and some engineers more so than others i mean in some practices i've been to the, the green ticket is really the, the the primary concern to them because it's it's maybe what their practice is yeah. has evolved into you know sustainability environment or, or that sort of thing so it's, it's really crucial that people understand the less material you can put in your first fix you, you can't tick the box any better can you no no you, you absolutely can't so you need to you need to assess that um and i think that we, you know, as new engineers come through, they'll be looking to be guided by manufacturers. As I said, mm -hmm. you know, we've always in our careers found products that we like and we tend to use. And at the end of the day, if, if you're using someone and their product's great and their service is good, why should you change? Yeah. But, you know, with the threaded rod argument, people don't use the same rod. The same with channel. They don't use the same channel. They have a product that is 41, 41 or whatever. So they've bought channel, but who's manufactured that channel? Mm -hmm. Whether it's, you know, some of the market leaders or whether it's been cut from a tanker on a going beach and made to look like <laughs> channel, they, they really don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there, there's there's not the accountability at the moment in with some products that, that there is with wire. Mm -hmm. And I think as, as we develop the environment, the litigious nature of it, you know, it's getting far more contractual as we as we move yeah. through. So people but need companies that can hold their hand and be supportive and know that when they put that manual together at the end of a job, the information in there is absolutely mm -hmm. honest. It's, mm -hmm. it's been provided with integrity. It's accountable. So I suppose what, what you're saying is then the, the, the future for, for, for wire systems, or let's say, um, end users are probably more likely to use a wire system than a threaded rod system in the future purely because of the you know the you're engineered it as one complete bracket and you've got that traceability would you say that definitely yeah. i mean you know we, we can trace our, our wires right back to the mill yeah so you know on any project we 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 know exactly when the, the material was made um yeah full traceability mm -hmm. um so so it, it'll be interesting you know, it, it won't happen overnight. There's, there's, I think, mechanically, we probably do more in terms of the um, HV uh, duct work and that sort of thing. I think electrically there is a, uh, a more reluctance to go with wire. Um, I can't really comment because I'm from an electrical background. Yeah. Uh, I can understand some of the concerns, but again, down to us as manufacturers to allay those concerns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and I personally, you know, in discussions with my colleagues, have got. A lot of things that I'd like to do testing on to prove to push the envelope. Yeah. Once we push the envelope, then you know people will look at it with with a different viewpoint. Mm -hmm. um, we won't convert everyone. We're realistic enough to know that. But mm -hmm. what we would like to do is for everyone to see it mm -hmm. and not just dismiss it. Yeah. Because some people they just dismiss it out of hand without fully understanding the benefits and yeah. what's behind it. And and I find that short-sighted because at the end of the day they could be doing their company <coughs> out of some some profitability absolutely i mean yeah i believe that i mean i've always thought that if if you're in this industry you know um as, as an engineer or an end user i think you know we need they need to be held accountable to making sure that you know they are up to speed with you know modern uh, modern practices and modern way of doing things um I mean, it's, you know, we're all the future of the construction industry, aren't we? So it's continual professional development. Isn't it? At, the, yeah, at yeah. the end of the day, you know, if it was uh, really high tech, you know, building management systems, light and control systems, um, power generation or whatever, people would be reading articles. If you look at some of the data center magazines and the high tech stuff that's in there, you know, yeah, yeah. Pe people will read those. But when it comes down to it, for a data center to be effective, 
the the first fix, the containment, the services have got to be in there correctly. You mm -hmm. know, right material, right solutions. Mm -hmm. So p people kind of overlook that. Your mm -hmm. building won't function well mm -hmm. if your services aren't in it correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, as I said, I know we, we mentioned it loads of times this morning. You have to work with manufacturers that can give you that accountability and confidence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and CPD and looking at articles and reading articles, that's how you change. That's how you develop. That's how you start to get Or listening confident. to podcasts. Listening to podcasts. <laughs> and there, there can be no better podcast to listen oh, to than what, this mate. one, Jake, can there? I Sorry. listen to it on loop. Constantly on the. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing yeah. better than hearing your own voice, mate. Oh, not with a deep, deep purple soundtrack, eh? Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, I mean that, that's it. I think the future for wire is really exciting, mm. and I think there's a, there's a lot of systems out there. You know, you look at seismic bracing and things, and the wires that yeah, are yeah. used for that. I mean, it'd be good to see uh, wire systems used more in like mechanical applications or even industrial. Uh, I mean, certainly we are seeing wire predominantly used for, well, in some cases used for, you know, cosmetic purposes. I um, mean, years ago we did the, the Darwin Centre when I was at uh, Cablerfield uh, and all of the, the services there were on show. So everything had to be put in really, really correctly and mm -hmm. cut properly and all that. Um, I was looking at a magazine last week and there was a, a housing development where all the services are on show, you know, conduit and, and fittings and that. Yeah. And it's quite a modern look, isn't it? It's, it's like it, yeah. that industrial looks quite modern now. Is it to yeah. have all the? I mean, I think if, I even went to uh, my friend, a friend of mine. He's just moved to a new house, and he, I think he's even got the Unistrup uh, shelves with some um, some proper boarding that you'd have on yeah. kind of construction sites. But it's kind of it's it's it, that kind of aesthetic that right. people are going for. Now. It's, it's cool. It's a great solution. But you know, if you go and visit your friend and you look at the conduit drop to the switch, and you go, that's it. That's not quite straight. It, a, yeah. You know, you'd have to turn your chair around, wouldn't you? Yeah, but yeah. I, I mean, that's that's the way forward. Yeah, yeah. And and <coughs> why not? So you, you've got to embrace all these technologies. And yeah. as as I said, I think there's a, a a fabulous future for wire. And I think the more that people uh, experience it, work with you know reputable manufacturers to to try it, um, they're going to find out that there's there's a lot of benefit from it and at mm -hmm. the end of the day we should never be shy to say that you know contractors have got to make a profit and and using products that can make some um, part of that be a be a part of them being more profitable is brilliant yeah, yeah. well but, I think it, if it's a product that makes them more efficient efficiency is money isn't it absolutely. it's cost you know so the more efficient absolutely. they are it's uh, they it might be paying a little bit more <clears throat> up front but you get so much back in return yeah. C comes back to what we said earlier, you know, you just want people to give you the time mm -hmm. to present. And it's like I've, I've always said to people, if I didn't think the products that I work with offered you a benefit, I wouldn't waste your time. Yeah, you yeah. know, <clears throat> we wouldn't be doing this podcast if there was no, no benefit to be derived from it. You know, what, what we've got to say is just take the time. And now is a good time to do it because, mm. you know, a lot of people are not getting out uh, in terms of the site visits, et cetera, et cetera. Well, definitely, yeah. So they can certainly go online or have Teams meetings or whatever to talk to someone and say, okay, I'm a, I'm a threaded rod user. Why should I use why? Well, mm -hmm. the first thing we do, listen to this podcast. Yeah, yeah. But the second thing to do would be phone up the manufacturers, mm -hmm. give us a call, yeah. let us allay your fears. Yeah. Get you involved, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, well that's, uh, that's good, Tim. Thanks for that. So I think that's, <clears throat> from my point of view, I think we've covered a lot of ground there. Um, yeah. So like I said, I think the main concerns are <clears throat> the fire rating question, but we know that's in development. So what, hopefully with a, the hard work you put in, we'll have a nice standard test eventually for that. Eventually, you know, standards don't happen quickly. They don't, they don't. You need to pull your finger out there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so to speak very kind of you Joe. <laughs> but yeah um yeah thank you for that tim Pleasure. um thanks for coming out to today it's good to good to see you again always good to catch up yeah it's been good uh, thanks uh, thank you to you and the midfix team for the opportunity yeah. appreciate it yeah no problem at all um so yeah thanks thanks for listening guys um i hope you enjoyed uh, this podcast i hope you learned a bit today about uh wire solutions um yeah and Stay, stay in tune for, for the next one. But yeah, thanks again, Tim. All the best, Jake. Thanks. Cheers.